Thanks, everybody. Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Camilleri. How do you take a classic and remake it into a limited series for cable? You hire one of the greatest living writers to adapt the source material, get a phenomenally talented director, and cast people who are perfect for the roles. Howard's End on Stars has all of those ingredients, and it's going to please fans of the book, the Merchant Ivory film, and everybody else. Let's take a look. Now, Helen, don't let's act like fluttering idiots. Oh, yes, I agree. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Margaret, you've always been so independent. Isn't that reckoned to be a good thing, Aunt Julie? You always have the most extraordinary people here. What an interesting life you live, Miss Schlegel, mm. dear. We pretend we're improving ourselves, you see. You are really the most peculiar girls. What do you think, Mrs Wilcox? I think it is wiser to leave discussion to men. What the devil are you playing? Isn't it lovely? No, it is not. You're giving me a headache. Both of you are giving me a headache. Please stop quarrelling. What's in that letter, Meg? Bad news? Poor Mrs Wilcox. Mr. Wilcox, I'm so dreadfully sorry. You are very good to come. The post's come, Father. I don't understand. It's a letter from your mother. What does it say? I should like Miss Margaret Schlegel to have Howard's end. What? Who is Miss Schlegel? The mother admired her, and Miss Schlegel was very kind. The house meant so much to her. It isn't like her to leave it to an outsider. How do you do? Thought I'd recognize your voices. I like Mr. Wilcox. Only because you dissect him. Don't you dissect Mr. Bast? I like him so much. We're always dissecting people. Men like the Wilcoxes batter their way through the abyss, pulling heaps of money from it. I hate him. You don't understand him. You too feel lonely. Horribly. Mr. Wilcox has made me an offer of marriage. It is a wonderful feeling knowing a real man cares for you. Meg, don't do such a thing. I know. You don't. What do you know? Don't! His money is nothing to me. Personal relations are the important thing. I'm going my own way. I must speak to Mrs. Margaret Wilcox. Mr. Bast? Do you pretend to hide this dreadful secret? Oh, no! Margaret! Everybody, please welcome Haley Atwell, Matthew McFadden, and Philippa Coulthard. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, and congratulations on everything, okay? Okay. <laughs> uh, congratulations on such a beautifully rendered series and an ad uh, adaptation of something that I bet everybody going into it had a little bit of hesitation, I would imagine, right? A little bit of nerves adapting this? No, excitement, I think, because it's mainly partly because we all knew it was going to be adapted by Kenny Lonergan. And we, I was such a fan of his and knowing that he's a modern day American writer who'd done Manchester by the Sea and how emotionally affecting that was. To be able to then take on material like this, we just felt really exciting. It'd be a fresh take on something. Didn't feel like it was going to be a mannered, stiff period drama, but it was just going to be about relationships. And yeah, it, it really is an, a mannered, stiff period drama, although it is about social conventions and it is about how people talked and related to each other. It is approached in a much more, I don't know if you would call it unconventional or sort of casual and, and, and fun way a lot of times. He can't not write jokes, I think, Kenneth Lonergan. No, and there's a lot of humor. There's humor in it yeah. anyway, but he's, yeah, he's certainly attuned to it. And I think it was, maybe it feels less sort of precious than perhaps a film might or another film might because it's four hours, you know, because we had so much more time to explore the characters and tell the story. Did any of you sort of go back and look at the original Merchant Ivory film or did you try to stay away from that and not let it influence your, your performances? I didn't try and stay away. I mean, it's just, it's like, <clears throat> I... I kind of I felt that like Margaret Schlegel was kind of you know one of those amazing female characters in literature, and when I spoke to Emma Thompson about it, she was delighted. She was like, "You're gonna love playing her," and it was that feeling of being able to play a character who you know any actress would love the opportunity to do it. She's so fully formed and fascinating and contradictory, and so it was. I didn't. I was also slightly the kind of feeling of of the film being so wonderful and so beloved that we were in really great hands in a world that had already been known to the world and told so beautifully that we were excited to kind of step into that pathway too. 
When you talk to someone who's played a character that you're about to play, do you talk about how they played it or what their interpretations of the text were or anything like that? Just out of curiosity. No. <laughs> and I haven't, I don't know whether, no, you wouldn't have had that conversation with Emma, would you? But it, I mean, it, she told me not to watch her material just because you don't want to get into a feeling of having that in your head so you end up kind of doing a diluted impression as opposed to focusing on what the you know the writer is telling you to do or what you feel the character is doing um and not really i mean <laughs> i'm sitting there talking about the creative choices we've made um i no not, not really i feel just, for howard's end you know yeah no i i think just because it's well, hetty as well sort of you know she did say she certainly said to me don't watch the film and I wasn't going to anyway, I don't think, just because, you know, it is so loved and, um, it, uh, you know, people adore it for a reason. I've since seen it after we've finished filming and I can see why. I mean, it's so brilliant and, you know, um, yeah, but I think to just look at Helen and Margaret and all of these characters with sort of fresh eyes was really um, important and especially for it to have that um, new feel and for it to be something different. Did you guys go back and read the book? Oh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. What does that help you do? I mean, because obviously there's going to be a lot of internal, uh, internal stuff about your characters in a book that's not in a screenplay just because you kind of can't fit it there. How does that help your performance? It just, it's all adds, for me anyway, it just adds to the, uh, I don't know. It's, it's just lovely. It's not actually, it's useful in that it's a backdrop to what you're doing, but it's not the book you're shooting. It's um, the screenplay always. So... It's, you know, to get hung up. Sometimes you can get hung up on stuff from the, from the book that's not in the script and vice versa, you know. Um, you could be like, well, he wouldn't do this. And they're like, well, this isn't exactly. the book. And you're he not, has not to do it for the this book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're shooting a, a screenplay. And it's a brilliant screenplay, you know. So you sort of just do what the, what the character does in the screenplay. There was a moment, though, of... Um, I remember the art uh, director production came up to us and asked us what, what our cat... What we wanted in terms of props in the drawing room, the living room of where they live, um, and came up to Pip and myself and also Alex Lauder, who played Tibby, this, the other sibling, mm -hmm. and asking if there's anything from the book that they wanted to be there, not necessarily that was in the script or that we'd even use, but that just visually we would see it there. So it was kind of creating that the details in the book visually. So for me, I thought, you know, Margaret so much about literature and books and writing and I wanted stationery around and um Helen was you know she's so expressive and impulsive and that she would certainly have watercolors around or um Tibby's fossil collection yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alex's Tibby is really great he's extremely funny um what was it like working with him Really tough, actually, because he was so funny and he would there's a scene early on uh very early on in episode one where um he's complaining that he's very, very ill. And he's, as a hypochondriac, yeah. Margaret's not sure if, if she should stay with him or can go off to Howard's End to be with Helen. And so a doctor is called. And when we did the scene, um, you know, the doctor says, well, you know, he's, he's okay, he'll live. But, um, you know, maybe, maybe you should stick around. And to be really, Alex really enjoyed the fact that, um, you know, Margaret was going to have to drop everything for him. And as at the end of the scene, he just very delicately popped a little bit of Turkish delight in his mouth with this coy little smile, like, I've got exactly what I wanted. And he was very funny doing it. He's got great comic timing. Uh, there's a wonderful scene. I think it's in the second episode, maybe the third episode. I don't want to give too much away. I mean, it's Howard's End. You can't spoil anything. It's a well-known story. But the, the proposal scene, I was talking to you about this backstage. I love that scene so much because I love the way that the two of you are playing that um, in the way that you are, you're, you're uh, so casual about it. And you're sort of, uh, he's bowled over with this proposal and he, it seems like he's going to fall apart while he's trying to do it. And she's just kind of, very casual and funny about it. Can you talk a little bit about that scene and playing against sort of types there? It was good fun, wasn't it? That it scene? was good <laughs> fun. It's always, it's what's happening under the surface, kind of like the panic, <laughs> but having to keep that composure on, on the surface. Um, I, I think it, what I, I felt it was, was very... It's, know, one, it's one person who thinks he's sort of running the scene and actually he's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And I felt a bit like, uh, you know, a character just going, shh, don't speak, don't speak. <laughs> 
Yeah. Just like bullets you're going to ruin the moment. Yeah. yeah, very bullets over Broadway moment. Um, I just love he says something like uh, he says, "I hope you're not offended," and she says, "I'm not offended. I find you breathtaking." Yeah, you. But she's my, like you not my breath away. Yeah. Yeah, but she's not doing it in a sentimental way or anything. It's just very matter of fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think she knows what's coming and knows it's he's finding it difficult. It's to also watch. very. It's sort of amazingly generous. It's very characteristic of Margaret. It's amazingly generous and imaginative of her actually to see what he's doing and what he's going through, you know. Yeah. Do you, when you do a scene like that, do you do uh, different takes or different kind of ways that it could go for the editing room? Because it is such a very specific choice to have Margaret sort of play, to play it that way. We rehearsed it, and by that point, the direction uh, that Hetty was taking it in and what we felt was actually on the page was very much like Matthew was saying, that's kind of characteristic of Margaret. Right. So there's, there were certainly lots of other takes, but it didn't kind of sway too much from that decision that we made, really, did no. it? No, and I don't really remember making a decision. You know, it was more like, it sort of looks after you, the writing's so good, mm -hmm. and, you know, you're acting with someone so good that actually it's, you're, it's sort of becomes, it, the, seal, the scene reveals itself just in the playing of it, I think. You know. Right, great writing doesn't require that much. I mean, no, you don't think, well, I'm going to play it like this. You, you sort work. of start, you know, Haley and I start doing the scene and it sort of is what it is, or, you know, and then it's sort of tweaked and Hetty um, directs us in a way, you know, but yeah, it's certainly not, let's make a decision to play it this way or. Yeah, good writing, you don't have to, you rarely get into conversations where, like, well, why am I saying this or no, is this don't boring? Need to. Yeah, it's no, very makes intentional. Sense. Yeah. 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 Um, Talk about uh, this house, the the Schlegel house that you you know you had these props in. It's a really beautifully designed. Where was that house, or was that a, was that a, s a stage? The exterior was in North London, um, and then so and then the interior was in Twickenham Studios. It was a stage, so you'd have you know the beginning beginning of a scene where you know we're walking into um, we're coming from the outside, walking in, and then we'd cut, and because you realise we've just walked into someone else's house in modern day London, and then we cut to walking into a stage. Um, but it was, yeah, it was really beautiful because a lot of it was very much like wanting to create, rather than that feeling of being a set, more of a sense of this people's home. We wanted to feel very lived in and very naturalistic. So you'd have shawls draped everywhere and music um, sheets of paper everywhere and books opened at random pages. And um, that mm, kind of feeling that it was a, a, live, a living, breathing space. Um, when you have writing, as we said, that this is this good and intentional, but you're playing, still playing sisters, do you do a lot of work beforehand to try to sort of feel more sisterly or close going into the shoot? Or do you feel like the writing kind of does it and the sets and the costumes and everything? I mean, I think definitely that all, ha I mean, it would be so luxurious. You're a very and cheeky look. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it would be so luxurious and lovely to sort of have, you know, all this time before you start filming to become sisters. But in a way, the fact that we were thrown in the deep end and that, you know, this was my first sort of real job in the UK, um, you know, and I felt that Hayley completely took me under her wing. And so in that sense, you know, it was... Um, easy to sort of feel like that and um yeah i guess there wasn't you know there certainly wasn't any real rehearsal time for that but um and again it is in the writing and um you know there's there's so much in the book as well and um yeah i think yeah. We the, the casting of it as well i think you know hetty and the team kind of finding actors that they f they feel are going to kind of uh, the chemistry will work with it. They'll bring qualities that are true to the characters, which will then create the right relationship too. So it felt it felt very natural. I mean, we certainly had a lot of fun in between takes, and that kind of sense of just hanging out and having a good time informs the work and makes the work much more relaxed because we all kind of the ice is broken, and so we can have a we can enjoy it. Oh, what was it like working with um, the legend Tracy Ullman? funny i saw i remember at one point there was um a very thin wall dividing little green room to my green room <laughs> do you remember this and i heard, i heard uh, she was on youtube looking up videos of Theresa may and then impersonating them i could hear her practicing and i was had my ear off against them all going i'm witnessing creativity happening right now and she was great but she would also um she you, when she walked on set you could tell that she would be watching people and listening to exactly how they spoke and their body language and would be able to do an impression of you as soon as your back was turned. <laughs> um, and we, we definitely... Did she do an impression of any of you? 
we, she, we, I she, mean, she would start talking in an Australian accent around <laughs> me and she'd be like, I'm sorry, it's just unconscious. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, one of the ADs who had a lovely Welsh accent, that would always sort of yeah. Yeah. infiltrate into her. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Matthew, what was your uh, impression of uh, Mr. Wilcox sort of uh, before you even started shooting? What were your thoughts about the character? I, th I I liked him. I mean, I mean, there's much to like, mm -hmm. uh, and he's you know he's he's sort of emotionally blocked. <laughs> Doesn't. But he's trying. You play him. But so he well does as his best. Well, trying. he does his best. I think they all the characters do their best, but he certainly does his best. You know, he's a man of his time, and, and so he, you know, but, and he's not one of those men who thinks about how he's feeling very much, as a lot of men of his age and generation and social standing so what's so interesting um, though is that i feel like you play him with a lot of feeling like as much as he's a man who doesn't may not talk about his feelings or think he seems like someone who is feeling a lot okay a yeah. lot of the time i didn't deliberately i mean i just sort of did what he does you know and, and then but in the and in the situation that comes out i guess uh but he yeah he's not i mean he's he just doesn't examine his feelings doesn't mean he doesn't care or you know or isn't kind and he's uh, and he and also you know he's incredibly pig-headed and stupid in many ways you know and afraid um good fun to play um this this the director uh hetty excuse me yeah. uh hetty uh she directed all four episodes of this how long did you guys shoot what was it like working with one director for all four episodes is it just like making a, a bigger a big movie uh, it felt more like also doing a, a play, actually. Hetty, so she was, we had a bit of rehearsal time, a couple of weeks, and then we were filmed, I think, for 12 weeks, something about that, was it? Yeah. 11, 12 weeks. And um, Hetty would often start each day if it was a particularly big scene that was happening. She would start the day with a rehearsal, but the actors and her would have the floor, so the crew would go off and get a cup of tea and get set up, and we would rehearse the scene like a play so we might start over by the fireplace and go oh I think I'll come over here and pick up some watercolors at this point and you know do something over there and so we figure figure out physically and geographically what we're going to do and then she would have the book and the, the script and then she That's would a lot more freedom than I think you normally get for television right yeah well it just I think it meant that we could make we could just be a bit more inhabit the space a little bit more feel like it was like a, you know, using using what was around us and and interacting with the props and the environment and each other a little bit more. And then she then then the crew would come in and work on the angles of the way that we had moved. So it just it didn't feel like we were kind of you say your mark and you say your line and as naturalistic as you can mumble it and then there you are you're you're an actor. It felt that we were had a little bit more um, a sense of ensemble, very much like you would do a play. And she long was takes, assistant. You know, there were long mm. scenes. And yeah. My favorite scene was the one on the one of the favorites was the one on the hill you know in Swanage and we had this <gasps> yeah 11 with, page scene oh, it was just bliss to shoot we did the whole day really up there and it was Kenneth Lonergan's dialogue which is very sort of intermeshed but it was mm. very specific and uh and yeah it was like a pages and pages and pages so it felt like doing a, a play mm. a scene in the play was Lonergan ever on set with you guys no. he, he wasn't I, I met him at the read-through and uh and then he was we'd kind of back and forth with emails and um he and Hetty had worked together in the royal court in London uh, back in the 80s and so were um disregard the, the, the gym the workout gym session He's, they're yeah. very excited okay. for how it's <laughs> going yeah. on up there trying to break through to get to this interview yeah. Coming, I'm coming. <laughs> On stars, guys, don't yeah, yeah, worry. Yeah. <laughs> April 8th. Uh, um, let's yeah. actually, oh, sorry. No, ju uh, just that he, we'd, Hattie would speak, would, you know, could, would come up to me and say, oh, um, Kenny's written that as a, with a comma, so let's honor that. Like, she was that specific. She made sure that, you know, we were doing what was written, and there was no kind of, the, the script was so lean, there felt like every, every line was there for a reason. There was no fat on it. There was no exposition for the sake of it. Yeah. It was very ca carefully nuanced based on kind of and character driven. Um, yeah, so she, you know, she was, yeah, and he, he was available to us kind of by email and he would watch the dailies every day and, and suggest certain notes. If, if the direct character, character was going in a certain direction, it, it may be a bit too early or whatever, he'd make sure that um, we all kind of remained on the same page with it. Commas are pretty important in screen, screenwriting, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a big difference in a in a line of dialogue. Mm -hmm. 
Um, let's get uh, some questions from this audience. Who's got one? Right here. Yeah. Um, I was wondering if you prefer doing um, period work and, or contemporary period pieces, you know, contemporary period pieces. And for Matthew, I was wondering if you're ever thinking of coming to New York to do stage work? Uh, I, the first part of the question, I don't mind period or, but if you, I guess if you do too much of one thing, then you sort of like anything, you know, you're yearning after another. No, uh, I don't think so. And then uh, I would love to come do a play here. Yeah, yeah, love to. Does anyone else want to field the period piece question? I, I agree with Matthew. Great, <laughs> great. Think, yeah. yeah, as long as it's an interesting character, I think it doesn't matter sort of when it is. No. Next question. Well, I just first want, want to say, I'm looking forward to seeing the show. Um, also with period, what brings you to a particular period? What do you use, do for research? Uh, what, you know, is there a driven force to doing a particular piece of, let's say, 18th century, 19th century? Um, the, in, in regard to Howard's End specifically, um, Hattie had found these, this archive, these photos of Edwardian men and women walking through the streets of London, and unlike a lot of the portraiture the back then that had to remain incredibly stiff in order for the camera to take the shot, these were slightly blurry because they were action shots. And there was, you see these kind of big black skirts striding, you know, these women were wearing, and books under the arm, head back laughing, some women smoking cigarettes, chatting to each other, and there was a sense of kind of life to it that made me kind of think, or does period drama get a bad rep of stiff or do we go into stiff acting or mannered acting too much because we have all these pictures of people looking really austere yeah. and and then so discover all these photographs gave a kind of a was a great kind of research tool for us a great source of knowing that we could bring kind of naturalism to it and a realism to it because that's how they would have they would have breathed the way that we do um so yeah and i think it's it's helpful a little bit of to understand better the time if you're if i'm saying something if the character is saying something that's particularly resonant to a political or social situation that was happening then, it's often kind of good to, to find out what she's actually talking about <laughs> if you don't know. And that gives you confidence in saying it a little bit. But um, each project requires kind of a different different level of or you know research and whatever and, and then some actors I know don't do any at all and they find that more use that more useful really so everyone kind of has a different it's approach. kind of whatever is useful for you I think because you can't play the research you can only play the scenes you know so it's whatever yeah whatever is helpful um guys I love the show the series congratulations it premieres on stars uh April 8th I think that's this Sunday yeah. right yeah. Sunday night on stars, uh, it's a really great piece of work. Thanks so much for coming on and talking about it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.